This is easily one of the worst printers I've ever reviewed, yet I'm still saying it's great value for money, so stick with me. No matter what I have to say about this printer, it will still swiftly be followed up with, but it's only $100. And when you take that into account and look at the kind of print quality it's capable of, you'll understand that 3D printing for beginners just got a very clear top pick for those of you on a budget. So let me tell you everything wrong with it and why you shouldn't care. Hi, I'm Ross, and this is a Fohammer video. So yeah, I say this is one of the worst printers I've ever used, but in all honesty, I've had resin printers that cost nearer a thousand dollars, and they are much worse in value proposition than this. The printer comes fairly well packed, you just slide everything out of the box and then remove the printer from its foam sarcophagus. And I could immediately tell just how cheap this was from its overall weight and general plasticiness. But again, it's only $100, and this is the modern equivalent of something like a Mars 2. But this is so cheap that even the shipping protector film for the front LCD panel had started peeling off before I even took it out of the box. And the printing display is tiny, at only 6 inches, with a roughly 2K resolution of 2560 by 1620 pixels. The Pixel XY size is 51 microns, which is quite large when compared to today's standards, but in all honesty, you can look back at older 2K printers from a couple of generations, or about three years ago. We really haven't come that far in terms of quality, especially when you use a decent resin. Models printed on this are more than passable for the majority of users, especially brand new 3D printers who just want some extra bits. In fact, there's a ton of companies out there now who are selling Warhammery style compatible components and bits. Most of them started on 2K printers and several of them still run businesses at that resolution too. So few people can genuinely see a quality improvement in the new generations. Now the build volume on this is also quite smaller, only 130 by 82 by 190 millimeters but this is still more than enough to print off several miniatures at once. You can get decent sized squad on a build plate and it's not like you'll be able to paint them as fast as you can print them. Because despite its flaws, thanks to the small print area, this printer can print quite fast. But back to how cheap it is, the whole chassis is plastic and so is the vat. Not only is it cheaply plastic, but just screwing this into the body of the printer can be a bit of a pain because there's not enough clearance around the bolts to fully turn them because they sit below the top of the vat and your thumbs get in the way. The release film, however, is clear FEP. It's old FEP. It's not the newer NFEP or PFA, which lasts a bit longer. And replacements for this are only available from Alcade because they ship the FEP with the plastic frame already on it. But that does make changing it a lot easier. The Z-Arm has a single linear rail and a traditional lead screw, so you may experience some Z-Wobble in time, but I had none in my limited testing. The build plate is another sign of how cheap this printer is. There's no laser etched or even sandblasted plate here. It's just the same blue painted aluminium face as the rest of the mechanical chassis. But in all honesty, so long as you get your base exposure layers right, which isn't that hard and I have a video showing you how to do it, there will be no issue with prints sticking to this or removing them. And now it even has a four point screw mechanism found in higher end printers, though in this case you can genuinely feel how soft the metals are when you tighten the screws, so don't throw too much force behind it and thread the screw. Leveling is easy, just loosen the screws, send the bed to home in the menu, hold the plate down as you tighten the screws and back out of this menu to choose set Z to zero. Don't miss that last step, so many people do, and then nothing will print. And the main gripe I have with this printer shouldn't surprise you because you've watched my other videos, it's the USB port placement. Now if you watch my videos, you'll know I whinge when a USB port is on the side of a printer, but here, it's on the back. This is the worst place to put it. I can never find the port, and when I do, my USB drive's always the wrong way round. Now you'll get used to it, especially if this is your only printer, but it's blooming awkward. Thankfully though, this problem is easily fixed with a cheap USB extension cable that you can just grab off Amazon. The menu and UI is as basic as they come. It's functional and it works, but it looks cobbled together. But again, this printer's only $100. But the accessories you get with it are basic to the point of hilarious. You get one cheap plastic scraper, one hex key instead of a set, a USB drive which actually has some decent print files on it to be fair, and for some reason some tweezers. I genuinely can't think of a time I've ever needed tweezers for resin printing. 
Though to be fair, that's still a far cry from the inclusion of a non-working and then barely useful webcam. And then finally, printer setup. Unlike all other brands I've tested, Alcade is a smaller company. As such, when you install Chitubox, which is included on the USB drive, you won't be able to just add the printer from the list of supported devices. But setup is as easy as choosing the generic profile and then setting the printer's area and pixel size. Name the printer and you're good to go. And all of these things are explained to you clearly in the manual. And yeah, this is an extra step for a smaller brand, but it's easy and you only do it once. So let's get on to print quality, because let's be fair, that's what matters. Well, this is a 2K printer with 51 micron pixels. That's comparable in quality to something like Frozen Sonic Mega 8K. Despite me saying it in every video, too many people still don't understand that 2K, 4K and 8K are fixed numbers. Screen resolution is not pixels per inch, it's in a fixed value no matter how big the screen is. What matters most for printer quality is the size of the pixels in the screen. And whilst this is a little below the quality standards of most modern printers of around 35 microns or less, it's not three times worse. Yet the printer's less than the third of the cost of other more entry-level models. I printed the same Wolverine sculpt on this that I do in every printer review, and it looks fine. All the prints here are using our own Wargamer resin, which is designed to make sharp prints, but also durable models. As you can see on this Battle Sister sculpt from One Page Rules, the model is more than passable quality for decent miniatures. And these were printed with anti-aliasing too, with two times image blur. And it's just the same with this dredge marine sculpt from Mezguide. While some layer lines are visible, you can increase image blur further to combat this, but you will lose some more edge sharpness. Though, I'm sure most people would agree, this is absolutely fine for the quality of models they want. My favourite one though is this King Ormond model from the Lion's Tower. Just look at the detail in the dragon's face and the wings. Sharper printers will provide more definition here, sure, but if you're painting your models, does it really matter? Yeah, it helps a bit, especially with dry brushing and slap top techniques and washers and things like that, but not massively so. I don't expect the audience for this printer is those people who want the absolute best from their printed models. It's people who want to just get started without a huge outlay, and for that, this is absolutely great. But yeah, if you want to invest in one of these, then I'd definitely recommend a metal putty knife to go with it, but it's not like that's going to break the bank. And if you are just getting started, there's a ton of great minis out there you can print for free, like One Page Rules, who've got a complete starter set that you can print out and even have a game with. So whilst I can fault this printer in many ways, I can only do so when compared to printers three times the price. If you're looking for a cheap way to start, you accept the limitations of what I've shown here, wade in, because it works and the prints look great. I want to say thanks for watching and thanks to our channel members who get early access to content like this and even more benefits. So until next time, fly you fools. Fohammer out.